And another little known trick about uh, QuickBooks Online is uh, the usage of uh, custom fields. So I'm going to go click on the, <clears throat> the gear menu here and go to Company Preferences. And then I'm going to click on Sales. And then uh, down here somewhere under where it says Sales Form Content, I'm going to click on this little pencil here to edit. And then here are the custom fields. And this is how um, I can uh, configure these custom fields here. And by clicking on this little checkbox that says internal. Now, do I wish there was uh, more than three? Yes. Uh, do I wish these had drop downs? Yes, but there isn't. So we just have to deal with these. And let's assume for a second that these custom fields, none of them are public, uh, which basically means that the customer won't see it on an invoice. And then I'm going to uh, put here under where it says uh, the name of the custom field. I'm going to call this one time and then in parentheses I'm gonna put here a.m. slash p.m. so let's say for example I just want to know whether or not we did the service in the morning or in the afternoon for whatever reason that's what I'm trying to do with it and for this other one uh, and then we're just gonna call it uh, complete and then we'll put here y slash n in the legend so that way all we're telling people is this is the data that I want them to input unfortunately because I can't really do a drop down I'm at the mercy of the data of the data entry person so if the data entry person, you know, actually puts the word yes or puts C, <laughs> just to be funny here, um, it, or, or it, it could cause a problem when creating reports and we're going to get there in a second. But um, so I, I typically like to do s simple data entry on custom fields, especially if we're going to use them for special reports. So I'm going to go ahead and click on done. And then I'm going to uh, create uh, an invoice here. So I'm going to click on the new create and then I'll click on invoice. And then I'm going to create an invoice, I'm going to choose a customer, and then I'll choose a product, whatever, whatever it happens to be, and I'll put there whatever the price. But then here in the custom field, I'm going to put here PM. And then complete, I'll put here no, right, or, or, or N. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then just for the sake of time, let me also uh, duplicate this transaction. I'll, I'll click on copy, and then I'll click on a different customer here, and then this one will also be PM, and I'll put here complete no. And then I'll put here some other quantity and then I'll hit save and also for the sake of time I'll duplicate that one also and uh, I'll pick a different customer and this one we'll put here AM and then under complete we'll put Y and then I'll hit save and then just doing numerous pieces of data entry so then we can uh, figure out the type of report that we're gonna do here let me just change the rate on this one so I'll do save okay so I'm gonna go ahead and close it and then I'm gonna create a custom report that contains the invoices with those custom fields. So I'm going to click on reports. Here under search, I'm going to look for transaction list by uh, transaction list by date. And that's sort of the key report that we use there. That's just a, that's like the custom transaction detail report that there's on QuickBooks desktop. I'm going to click here on customize and then I'm going to limit this to only invoices. So whatever is it, the transaction that I'm tracking. So I'm going to put here on only invoices for transaction type. And then down here, I can actually create filters, right? So I want to see only the ones that were completed. So I'll just put a Y there and I click on run report. And I'm basi I'll basically narrow it down to only the ones that were completed. I'm going to click on customize and then I'll go down. And then let's say I want the ones that were completed and they were also in the morning. But right? let's say the ones that were not completed were also the morning. And this is where it's better to put little small codes like AM, PM, or Y and N that makes it a lot easier. So I click on run report. In this case, it, it really happened to be none. So let me go back into the filter here and then I'll put here AM and I'll put yes and I hit run. And then that should just render that same transaction. Now on the other side of the coin here is I can create a non-financial report. So for example, with the same information, I'm gonna click on changing uh, the, the columns and change the columns and I'll get rid of amount, I'll get rid of split, I'll get rid of account. Let's say I don't need all that. I'll get rid of posting, uh, I'll get rid of transaction type and I'll just keep sort of the customer's name, the date, the transaction number and the memo and then I'm going to bring in my custom fields. So I'm going to bring in complete and then I'm going to bring in my time and then I'll hit uh, and I'll bring this down. So I'm gonna, I, don't, I don't need it at the beginning so I need it all the way at the end. I'll bring that down and then I'll hit OK. And I'll, down here, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and get rid of the filters, right? Because then I just want to basically show all the invoices with those custom fields. And then basically, we can we can call this our job status report or, or our scheduling time job report or something like that. So this is like to really think of creative ways of, of using QuickBooks for other than just financial 
transaction. At the same time, that's the power of the memo, right? So if I want to put a memo down here and that says, uh, so let me see, uh, the memo, yeah, exactly, the memo down here, and I'll put here waiting for part, you know, whatever whatever note it is, and this is sort of the internal note. Uh, so when I when I look at that, I should see that in my in my description report. So again, the combination of fields that we can use um, is it, really good. Unfortunately, we're limited to just three, <laughs> three custom fields. But there's another one uh, lesser known, which is a, a ship via. Actually, I don't think it's enabled here. So let me go into the hit X there and I'm going to click on the gearbox and go to custom forms of styles, which is not there. So I'm going to go to gear and company settings, and then I'll go to sales, and then on the same place that I was, I'm gonna look for ship via. So this little box here that says shipping turned on, and if you click on the little thing, it tells you exactly what, what this means. That, that shipping box, which you may use this for a client that doesn't have any shipping whatsoever, but this is actually really cool. So when I turn on shipping, again, assuming that we're not really shipping anything and I'm using this for something else, and I'm gonna go to an invoice here. So I'm gonna go into my invoice and then I'll go back to one of the invoices that I was touching. So I click on the little history button. This little history button there is pretty cool. So I'll click on that. And uh, now I have this uh, shipping date and then I have uh, ship via. So ship via could in, in itself be a custom field as well. So that's really what I like about that. And tracking number could also be a custom field. So I can have more stuff here. Like I'm gonna put here, uh, UPS and on the ship date I'll put whatever that date means to me they say that I'm really using that for like service date or something like that and then and then on the tracking number I'll put some numbers and this is where again unfortunately as a user you you're gonna have to know that you're using these boxes for something else altogether but uh, but pivoting on that concept when I go back into my custom report and I'm gonna go to customize and then I go to change columns I can also see uh, ship via, there it is, and I can also see ship date, and I can also see that tracking number. So again, whether or not I'm using those uh, particular fields for what they're meant to, right, an actual ship date or an actual tracking number or actual ship via, that gives me potentially two extra custom fields and then a date level custom field. So hopefully the combination of, of, of custom fields and the custom reports gives you a little bit uh, more insight about what little creative, lesser known things you can do in QBO.